Well, here we are, people. Easter Monday already, the 5th of April, and welcome to our time of evening prayer. I apologise, first of all, if this video is a little bit shakier than normal today. I've left my tripod somewhere, and I can't find it for love or money. So for today, I'm going to have to hold the camera throughout evening prayer. But we begin our time of prayer with our prayers of preparation. O Lord, make speeds to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. The appointed psalm for today's evening prayer is Psalm number 135. Alleluia, praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. You that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Make music to his name, for it is lovely. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, and Israel for his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. The Lord does whatever he pleases, in heaven and on earth, in the seas and in the deeps. He brings up the clouds from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning with the rain, and brings the wind out of his treasuries. He smote the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn of man and beast. He sent signs and wonders into your midst, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and all his servants. He smote many nations and slew mighty kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan. He gave their land as a heritage, a heritage for Israel, his people. Your name, O Lord, endures for ever and shall be remembered throughout all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are but silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes they have but cannot see, they have ears but cannot hear, neither is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them shall become like them, and so will all who put their trust in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel, O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi, you who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion who dwells in Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on to two door, the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it in roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded. 
your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Here ends our first reading. And our canticle, A Song of Faith. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia! Blessed be God, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, into an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being persecuted by the power of God through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You were ransomed from your futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Our second reading from Scripture is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the Apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the Apostles unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Here ends our second reading. And our responsory. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die but live. He has declared the work of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And now the Magnificat. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia! My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. 
Alleluia. And so we come to our time of intercession. Let us pray. On this day that the Lord has made, let us pray for the people he has redeemed. That we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That all people may receive the good news of his victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those born to new life in the waters of baptism may know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those who suffer pain and anguish may find healing and peace in the wounds of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That in the undying love of Christ, we may be united with all who have died in the faith of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so let us commend the world in which Christ rose from the dead to the mercy and protection of God. In our worldwide calendar of prayer, we pray today for the Diocese of Belize in the Church in the West Indies. In our own diocesan calendar of prayer this month, we pray for the Myla Mission Area and for Sue Heighton, their mission area leader. We pray for Archdeacon John, Archdeacon of Wrexham, and we pray for Gregory, our bishop, for all his ministry for and among us. Lord, we pray for those who are developing, producing and rolling out the vaccine, locally, nationally and internationally. We pray for Colin and all in nursing and residential homes, and for Daniel and all in prison, and also their families. We pray for the work of Jane and the chaplaincy team at the Myla Hospital, and for Alan and the chaplaincy team at HMP Berwyn. We pray for those known to us at this time who are sick, those who are in need of our prayers, those who have asked us to pray for them, and those who have nobody to pray for them. We pray for Richard, Tim, Louise, Derek, Joanne, Mo, Betty, Malcolm, Edwin, Gordon, James, Mal, Anne, Nancy, Bob, Tequin, Peggy, Neera, Mark and Harry. And we pray for all those known to us who we no longer see but find their eternal rest with you, Lord. Amongst them, Maureen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and our collect for today. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.